so good morning and welcome to you all as we come together to worship and pray for the world and one another this first Sunday of Advent. My name is Reverend Gemma Stock and I'm the priest in charge here at St Thomas's and a particular welcome to you if you have not joined us before for worship. We hope you'll find this time um, a place of meeting with God and being welcomed by us. As we begin our time together, we also um, remember to welcome one another and uh, please do take time to do that in the comments on YouTube or Facebook. It's really lovely to see people saying hello to one another. And we particularly welcome Archdeacon Chris Burke, who has kindly agreed to come and be with us virtually this morning and share from God's word. So it's really great to have you with us, Chris. As it's the first Sunday of Advent, this may well have snuck up on you. Um, I know most of us think about Advent being in December, um, but we are obviously that many weeks away from Christmas now that it's time to begin our countdown to welcoming Jesus as a baby and celebrating that time. And so um, get ready for your Advent calendars. If you haven't got them already, I hope uh, that you are doing something to um, cheer yourself in these times that are a bit dark and a bit difficult. But as we come together, we remember these verses from Nahum, which are an encouragement to us about who God is. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. God is close to those who trust in him. And as we begin our time of Advent, our first candle reminds us of hope and we look back at those who have gone before us and um, the patriarchs is what we perhaps might call them, but people like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob in the past in the Old Testament, um, who we look back on as the start of this story for us. And we recall the hope that they were pointing to in Jesus. So as we get ready to light our first candle, we remember that God told Abraham that through him all the nations of the world would be blessed because he trusted and put his hope in God. The Old Testament spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a saviour would be born, a king in the line of David. He would rule the world wisely and bless all the nations. And we too believe in God's promise to send Jesus again to this world to establish his kingdom on the earth. And so as we light our first candle, we remember that hope is like light shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, we celebrate the hope that we have in Jesus. Let's pray. People of God, awake. The day is coming soon when you shall see God face to face. Remember the ways and works of God. God calls you out of darkness to walk in the light of his coming. You are God's children. Lord, make us one as we walk with Christ, today and forever. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let's praise Jesus together in our first hymn, Tell Out My Soul. Thank you. 
the night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we come to this time of reflection, let's just spend a moment perhaps allowing the Holy Spirit to show us where we might need to receive God's forgiveness or perhaps might need help to forgive someone else. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set us on set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And we come to our psalm. Now the psalms are a bit like the hymn book of the Bible, and we're gonna say the psalm together. Please do do that. Um, but if you would rather listen to the psalm, you can and perhaps speak out your own words of praise and thanks to God. So we're going to say together Psalm 67. So if you have a Bible near you, please do feel free to look it up. Or perhaps you can look it up on Bible Gateway and find it there. So Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now we're going to hear our Bible reading and Sarah will share that with us. Our Bible reading today comes from the Isaiah chapter 9 from verse 2, then verse 6 to 7. Isaiah chapter 9 from verse 2, and then verse 6 to 7, and they read, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned verse 6 to 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government, and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne, and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sarah. As you have shared the word with us, now we listen to Archdeacon Chris as he shares his reflections on that reading with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. So writes the prophet Isaiah. Firstly, uh, thank you so much for the invitation to speak with you this morning uh, and to be with you uh, digitally and virtually uh, with the community at St Thomas's. Um, I have had the date in my diary for some time and I was looking forward to coming to be with you uh, in the church. Uh, but alas, uh, in the last days of the present lockdown, uh, that isn't possible. But it's great to be with you on this Advent Sunday and to hear again those familiar words from Isaiah, that those who walked in darkness have seen a great light. I don't know... Um, if you had chance uh, a few years ago to visit a rather remarkable exhibition at Tate Modern. Um, it was one of those um, 
uh, kind of experiential art pieces, um, like a very large series of chambers that you walk through. Uh, and every time you walked through one of the chambers and they were interconnected, um, it got a little bit darker until you got to the final chamber. And in the final chamber, it was absolutely pitch dark, not a glimmer of light. And if you uh, opened your eyes, you could see absolutely nothing. Um, it was a really interesting experience. It reminded me that re in reality, we very, very rarely experience what it is uh, to be in the presence of complete darkness. Um, but in that, uh, that chamber in Taint Modern, uh, that was possible then. And it was a very interesting uh, and strange experience from having gone from the light of the outside world and the light of our daily lives to be taken stage by stage by stage closer to darkness until you're in a space where there is absolutely no light. It was weird. It was very silent. It was strangely isolating, even though we were in that space with other people. And in a funny kind of way, it was a bit debilitating. Um, it made um, those who were there not relate to each other, but in a sense, look inward on themselves. Of course, all those kind of experiences in art galleries come to an end and you have to make your way back through the chambers and back out into daylight. Uh, and as we did that, um, we came uh, back to experience um, the light that had been part of our previous uh, daily lives. Uh, the relationships sprung back to life as we could see people and talk to people and interact with them. And there was a, a great sense uh, of relief. So we went into darkness and felt isolation um, and disempowerment and silence and unfamiliarity. And we came back into light and once again occupied space that was familiar. Well, there's something very profound about that reading uh, coming as it does this Advent Sunday to us as a community who are just days away uh, from the lifting of the second national lockdown um, and to us experiencing what it means uh, to be instead in tier two. There is a sense that uh, that isolation, that burden, uh, that disempowerment is being lifted a little um, and we have uh, reason and grounds to be hopeful. Advent is a great time for us as a church. It's a great time for us, particularly this year, because it's filled with a sense of hope and expectation. We're looking ahead day by day, week by week to the coming of Jesus Christ. Um, I don't know if your own practice is to have an Advent calendar. Um, here in our house, we seem to have loads of Advent calendars, uh, some uh, with chocolate, some with other things. Um, uh, and I think you can, if you want to, get them with hot chocolate and gin and various types of beer and tea and all kinds of stuff. Um, ours are either pictures or chocolate, but they mark the stages of that journey and they raise a sense of longing and expectation as we travel through Advent together. Longing and expectation uh, for Christmas and its wonderful celebrations, even though this year uh, they may be a little different but also and particularly to the coming of Jesus Christ and the difference that our faith in Jesus Christ makes to us day by day and year by year. Advent is a time when the church is getting ready, we're preparing and, and we're making ready for the coming of Jesus. And it feels like our world is a bit like that now. We're looking ahead to a time when there might be a vaccine, greater testing, uh, much improved treatments to have a lasting impact uh, on the impact that uh, the COVID-19 um, has had within our communities. There is then a good reason for us to be hopeful, hopeful in the good news of Jesus Christ, hopeful in God's love for us that sustains and gives us um, a lasting hope for ourselves and hopeful for our communities that some of those uh, relationships and contacts and experiences that we treasure will once again uh, be, be restored. 
But there's hope for us as disciples and as a church too. And I want just to look at those two themes uh, for a moment. As disciples of Jesus Christ, through this period of Advent, we hold within our, our kind of uh, picture of hopefulness that desire to get ourselves ready. And during these weeks of Advent, as we open our Advent calendars and take out our bits of chocolate, uh, let us um, spend time in prayer and reflection, placing ourselves in God's hands and letting him know uh, what concerns us, but also <clears throat> how we feel <clears throat> we may be called as a community to work and to serve together. Let's use this time to listen, to listen to God uh, in our reading of scripture, to listen to our community in the way that we interact one with another, to listen to our brothers and sisters in Christ and to hear God's call for us, that we can be uh, generous in our response to that call. Let us have the courage to begin to take risks, not perhaps yet so much in our action, but certainly in our thinking. In our getting ready, let us look at those things that we've done perhaps every year in the past and done them just as a routine. Let's think them through and say what may we need to change and adapt and develop as we respond to the new opportunities that we share. And also during this period of Advent, let us imagine what the future may be like, what our hopefulness is drawing us towards and the opportunities that we have to be faithful witnesses to Christ at that time. And as a wider church community, this time of hopefulness and watching and waiting is particularly profound. Um, <clears throat> our worship in these last few months has been very topsy-turvy. We've been online, we've been back in church, we've been online, we're about to go back into church again. But it's taught us new ways to worship, uh, new ways to encounter God in word and sacraments. And it's important that we hold on to those <clears throat> and learn from them and can build on them in our life together. Our fellowship will be restored and it will be great uh, to see people face to face once again. We'll be able to build on some of those really important connections that we've had with our wider communities and also to be able to draw together all who have found Jesus in these complex last few months and especially those who've been dropping into our online services and whom for them that's their first experience of Christian community. So our reading today from Isaiah is really hopeful and gives us a strong sense of hope, expectation and longing. This great season of Advent has within it those hopeful notions of Christ's coming and what it means for us to get ready, to get prepared. And for those reasons, as we come together today, let us be both hopeful and also thankful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Archdeacon Chris, for sharing the word with us. As we continue in our service, we're going to pray and spend time um, listening also for what God wants to say, as well as praying for the world and for one another. Before we begin our prayers, let's just spend a moment of quiet listening for what God might want to say after what we've heard from Archdeacon Chris. As we continue in our prayers, um, Debbie will lead us and there are spaces in that for us to say our own prayers um, or perhaps if you feel comfortable, type in your prayers and prayer requests in the comments on Facebook and YouTube. Let's pray together. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, we thank you for the promises you have kept.
Help us, Lord, to follow your lead in our daily lives. We hold you in our hearts and lay our struggles and worries at your feet. We pray for wisdom to enable true promises to, to be kept, for respect and for love to grow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our leaders, our governments, the power brokers of our world, to show wisdom and keep their promises to be thoughtful and caring for their subjects. Lord, help our faith leaders to bring your word to all and to shine a light to faith, love and humility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our scientists as they complete their work to help mankind defeat this pandemic. We thank you for providing our scientists with all they need to understand what is needed. We thank you for showing these people their path in life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for our key workers who have continued to keep their promise to our society. Help them to continue through the turmoil of today that is felt by all of us. Help them to remain strong. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father, we lift our world to you, especially the areas suffering from conflict where people often die unseen. We pray for peace to these places. May your blessing rest on each nation and all its people. We pray for those at the mercy of the elements and pray that they can be healed from this destruction we all cause. Lord, show us the path we each need to take and keep promises to use less of our Earth's resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our community to you. Show us how to improve where we live through love and trust for each other. Help each of us to give our best to help us all to grow in God's love and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, all of us have our families and friends constantly on our minds. We bring them to you now. We ask for help as we all cope with levels of despair due to the current situation. We pray for those who are sick in body, those who are struggling due to poor mental health. May your blessing renew and transform them. We lift those struggling financially, those who are fearful of the future due to losing jobs, those who have been made homeless, those who fear homelessness, and those who help people facing these difficulties. Help them to find another way. Help them to renew their spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we think of those who come to you for help, those families in their grief, those unable to accept the death of a loved one. Help them to feel your comfort. Bless them in their grief. Bring them peaceful understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, finally, we lift ourselves to you for blessing our good Father. Your children need your patience and we need your help to keep your promises and our promises to you. Help us as we lead our families, our friends. 
help to protect them and help us to keep a good heart and listen to what you are saying to us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as the Lord taught us to pray, we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Debs, for leading us in our time of prayer. If you have been responding to God lately or you've been exploring faith, particularly if it's for the first time and you would like some help or support in this, we would love to be of help. If there's anything practical that you need or if you're especially struggling at this time, please do private message us um, on either YouTube or Facebook or use the contact details on our Facebook page. We would love to hear from you. It may well be that uh, you wish to give to St Thomas to support the work and ministry that we do. Um, it's part of our worship here to God. And if you'd like to do that, there are uh, links in the description online to guide you to the right page, which is safe and secure for any online giving that you may wish to do. Hopefully you looked in the notices at the beginning and uh, saw some of the things uh, that are important at this time. Uh, you're probably aware that we're now moving into a tier system and that we'll be moving into tier two. And um, this will mean that we are worshipping in the building uh, once more, but you can also continue to worship from home. Uh, we will continue to live stream our services on Sunday morning. So if you normally worship with us online, very little will change. Uh, but if you would like to come back worshipping in the building again, um, we have our Shielder service on Wednesday afternoons. Please do get in contact with me if you'd like to come to that via the Facebook details or the YouTube details again. Um, and also on Sundays at 10.30am, we're worshipping in the building. But as I say, our online um, evening prayers on Monday, Wednesday and Friday continue at 7pm. So you are more than welcome to continue to join us in that. And uh, as you will also see, hopefully some Christmas news um, on the notices, please do read back and have a look if you didn't see it. Um, you can scroll back along and it will get you to the beginning again of the service. Take a look at the different things um, that we are doing at this time. Um, but also in terms of Christmas services, please do be patient with us as we um, await further guidance. Um, as much information as we can give, we will, but some of it may well be delayed. Let's worship the Lord once more together with our final song.
worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. for joining us at St Thomas this morning as we have prayed and worshipped together. Um, a particular thank you again to Archdeacon Chris for joining us virtually and as we finish our time together we finish with God's blessing to us. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.